I've talked a lot about tank guns for use on main battle tanks, but in this video, I'm going to be looking at a type of can that would most likely be used on lighter vehicles. The intro clip was of a recoilless rifle, not a Raven cannon, but the two operate on very similar principles and there's no footage of Raven guns being tested. Raven stands for Rare Faction Wave Gun. I think this is a good demonstration of an acronym being butchered to sound cool. Raven cannons work much like recoilless rifles, by venting propellant gases to the rear of the weapon when it is fired, with the distinction being that in Raven cannons the breech is initially sealed, and the gases are vented after the projectiles traveled partway down the barrel, whereas on recoilless rifles they're vented instantly upon firing. This allows for the projectile to retain the vast majority of its muzzle velocity, while also cutting back on recoil. A Raven can is like a recoilless rifle that is capable of achieving much higher muzzle velocities. Recoilless rifles have traditionally had very low muzzle velocities. That was the trade-off for eliminating recoil. Because of this, recoilless rifles are limited to using chemical effect rounds like high explosive anti-tank and high explosive squash head, as they aren't capable of accelerating a kinetic projectile to the speeds required to be effective. Recoilless rifles have largely fallen to the wayside, as missiles are arguably the much better option for delivering chemical effect warheads. Raven guns essentially cheat that trade-off, while providing a number of other advantages and disadvantages when compared to conventional tank cannons. They don't completely negate recoil like recoilless rifles do, but they drastically reduce it. On a 35mm Raven demonstrator built by Ares Incorporated, the recoil momentum was only 39% of the closed breech baseline. Raven cannons also reduce how much the barrel heats up during firing. Propellant gases are obviously the main reason that tank barrels heat up, so by venting them, the thermal stress that the barrel experiences is mitigated. The most obvious advantage to Raven cannons is that by reducing the amount of recoil force generated upon firing, you can now mount much larger cannons on light vehicles. Giving light AFEs the punch to keep up with modern armored warfare has proven to be somewhat difficult. The closest the US has gotten to that so far has been the XM360 cannon, which I talked about in my ETC gun video. You can find a link to that in the description. Raven cannons do take a slight performance hit to muzzle velocity, but not enough to make kinetic ammunition useless. The increase in cannon size would be most helpful in light armor's primary focus, which is mobile infantry support, especially for paratroopers. Generally, the larger the cannon is, the more potent your chemical effect shells will be, with high explosive being the most important for that kind of work. By reducing the amount of recoil and thermal stress that the cannon needs to withstand, you can also make the cannon lighter. Tank guns are made with some heft to them for a few reasons. One, so it doesn't explode when you shoot it. Two, by increasing the mass, you decrease the amount of recoil travel the gun has. Third, so that the gun can absorb more heat during burst fire. Producing lighter cannons obviously means saved weight on combat vehicles, which is especially useful for tanks that are amphibious or air deployed. Raven cannons are also able to theoretically sustain a much higher rate of fire than regular cannons. This is not only due to the aforementioned mitigation of thermal stress, but also because the gun's recoil travel is significantly reduced. So the gun takes less time to reset, as it were. If a Raven cannon didn't have the kinetic power to frontally destroy an enemy tank in one shot, it could use its high rate of fire to shoot the tank until the armor failed, a process known as armor degradation. The US Army explored that concept with the HIMAG, HSTV, and RDFLT programs, which all utilized a rapid-fire 75mm cannon, also built by Ares Incorporated. Raven cannons will also take much longer to foul than other cannons do. All sorts of debris and residue build up in cannons after they fire, but with Raven cannons those particles are basically flushed out during the venting process. Don't be mistaken though, there will still be buildup and it will need to be cleaned. We don't want another M16 situation on our hands. Unfortunately, pretty much every supposedly great technology has some drawbacks. Like recoilless rifles and missiles, Raven cannons have a pretty significant backblast area. For those uninformed, backblast refers to the rearward expulsion of gases, either from a gun venting propellant gas, or from rocket exhaust. Backblast can be extremely deadly if you're standing in the backblast cone, so vehicles armed with Raven cans will have to be a bit more careful with where they fire their weapons. Though it's not like vehicle crews don't already deal with this issue. As I said before, other weapon types also create backblast. The types of turrets you can use for Raven cans are also limited. You obviously can't just put one in an enclosed turret, unless turning your crew into jelly from backblast is what you want. Really, the only turret options for Raven cans are external gun mounts, like the T114 BAT or Striker MGS, or oscillating turrets. Oscillating turrets would work because the gun is completely fixed to the turret. It doesn't need to elevate, so it can be placed further back with vents leading out the rear. I've actually seen a proposal to put a Raven cannon on the Striker, but I can't find any information on it, which I guess isn't too surprising. This is some pretty new technology that is probably still undergoing development. It should go without saying that, for a while, Raven guns will probably be somewhat expensive. The mechanisms aren't incredibly advanced, but venting gases with the required delay requires some precision that, I assume, comes with added cost. 
Additionally, while Raven cams reduce recoil, the recoil travel so far isn't always consistent. Sometimes the delay isn't quite right, and the gun recoils more or less than it normally would. Recoil compensators for Raven guns would need to be designed with some headroom. I think Raven cans could be put to good use on unmanned ground vehicles. Make a Raven can in the range of 57 to 75 mm, slap it on a drone tank, give it some ATGMs, and you have a sort of mini tank destroyer. Unmanned ground vehicles are a subject for an entirely different video, however, so I won't go too in-depth about the supposed benefits or drawbacks of those. These cans could also be mounted on planes or helicopters. They just have to be mounted very, very carefully. You don't want to vaporize your own wing or rotor from backblast. All in all, Raven cans look pretty promising as armament for light-armored fighting vehicles, with some decent advantages and not a whole lot of drawbacks. Their main draw over missiles is that they allow a light platform to deliver high-velocity projectiles that are either kinetic or chemical in nature which could be a boon in the age of active protection systems. Kinetic energy missiles could also be used, but that's a topic for another video. The attractiveness of the Raven can doesn't guarantee that they'll ever see the light of day. No one has any real way of knowing. It's hard to tell how far along Raven cans are. The only ones I'm aware of are the 35mm, 45mm, and 105mm demonstrators built by Ares Incorporated. Bit off topic, but the 105 demonstrator has a swing breach. Not really related to the subject of the video, but I thought it was cool. The demonstrators worked well, but were dropped from the future combat systems program for which they were developed. Due to the immaturity of the technology, the military just wasn't willing to bet the future of the tank program on a can type that barely has any development work behind it. It didn't really matter in the end. The FCS program didn't go anywhere. The website for Ares Incorporated isn't very helpful either. It looks to have been created around the time that Troy fell, and doesn't have much information on it anyway. But even if Raven cans are seeing active development or are put into service, their use will be pretty niche, I think. If you guys thought this was informative, I'd greatly appreciate it if you left a like. You can also leave a comment. I'm trying to respond to those more. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.